As a writer, I often find myself running low on topics about which to write. Everything I've been able to come up with as of late has already been run deep into the ground. Serial killers, zombies, and romantic comedy are just a few of the topics that have simply seemed to completely run dry of any creativity whatsoever. Because of this, I often find myself digging around for inspiration, whether it be at a library or on the internet, or at a small town bar or listening intently to someone's drunken ramblings. Oftentimes, if you search hard enough, you'll find little tidbits of information that seem out of place. I know, it sounds confusing, right? Well, I explain. Have you ever experienced deja vu? If not, it's a phenomenon where your brain makes a false connection between something that is currently happening to you and an event that may or may not have occurred in your life or otherwise. In the case that what you're experiencing has already happened to you, your brain will deem the connection insignificant and push it and quickly push it back to the back of your mind. In this case, you should consider yourself lucky. This means that your past hasn't been altered by them. However, if you experience deja vu at any point in your life and are still to this day racing through your memories trying to remake that connection, you have already been marked as a threat. And I'm so sorry. If you have been marked, then this means that you've performed an action in your past that's been deemed unacceptable. We still don't know exactly what actions they choose to erase, but if we have to guess, they will likely include things such as making a stand against the government or influencing a large number of people to do so. This does not include riots, however, as most people do not seem to take them seriously and therefore are not likely to make a significant, dangerous move against any higher authority. Also, as far as we can tell, as long as your ideals are accepted by their standards, you will not be stopped. Now, I will, con I will try to continue my explanation as best I can. To this day, we still do not know who they are. All we know of them is that they strive for complete control over the world, and they are capable of going to unimaginable lengths to do so. One of their favorite methods is by now, you probably could have guessed, is altering or even completely erasing events from the past. And if you've had your past altered even once, you have been marked as a threat to their system of control. And once you are marked, they will never stop trying to kill you, thus preventing you from screwing with their system again. However, every now and then, a detail escapes their grasp and is left behind, whether it be a newspaper article on a small, obscure webpage or simply a scratch on the side of a car. Have you ever seen something on the internet that has simply vanished the next time you want to expect it? That was them correcting their mistake. For they do not want you to discover something that you ought not know. Now, if you had your personal past meths with, it is likely that you have several, if not many, close calls with death. This is due to the fact that they are very good at manipulating objects, and even human beings in some cases to carry out the act of murder against you, make it seem like a complete accident. Ever been inches away from being hit by a car while crossing the street? That was them. Or have you nearly fallen off a tall ladder? Most likely, that was also them. If you have had these many close calls, then you should be proud of yourself. This means you have the ability to subconsciously intercept their signals and make split-second decisions to avoid what they have thrown at you. I happen to be one of these people. If you are as well, please contact me. Together we may be able to figure out who they are and how we can stop them from controlling us. Also, I beg of you to spread this around and get the word out. The more people we have on our side, conscious and aware of the imposing threat, the more difficult it will be for them to control us all. If we do not act soon, it is just a matter of time before my and your memories of my words are also erased. In the apartment complex where I now live, there is a story about a girl who lived in one of the buildings. She lived in the seventh floor and used to go home late because she was working on a thesis and her school was a bit far from her place. The story goes, every time she would take the elevator, it would stall on the fourth floor. The sliding doors wouldn't open or anything, but there would be this feeling of pressure on the elevator, as if someone would step in and join her. 
Do you know the feeling of having someone stand next to you and stare at you, even though you couldn't see them? Apparently, this would happen to her each time. In fact, it got so bad that one particular night she asked her mother if she could wait for her in the lobby and accompany her upstairs. And her mom, of course, agreed. The girl arrived home later than usual that night, say around 3 a.m. Thankfully, her mother was right at the lobby, waiting for her like she promised. They entered the elevator together, and when the elevator paused on the fourth floor, the girl looked to her mother and said, See what I mean? It always happens. The older woman, in an effort to comfort her daughter, wrapped an arm around her shoulder and leaned in, and before whispering, Do I really look like your mother? The next day, they found the slim form of the girl in the elevator, alone and dead. There were no marks on her body, and on her face was a look of pure horror. Act 1. The words run through my head. It's the only thing I can remember. I look around. I'm standing in what looks to be an old-fashioned theater with a red carpeted stage and rows upon rows of seats. One of which I'm sitting in. It's dark, and the lights would shine on the stage that are off. On the stage, I can make out a figure in the shadows. It stands there, motionless, not moving even in the slightest. I stand up from the seat and begin to make my way around the seats, slowly but steadily walking up to the stage. As I place one foot on the steps beside the stage, a bright spotlight flashes upon the figure on the stage. It's a wooden shop mannequin, unmoving, unblinking. Its bright blue eyes painted on and its red green is unnerving. I find that I do not want to look at it anywhere but at it. Just then, there is a sound from above, a rush of air, and there is a stabbing pain in my back, my arms, and my legs. I see a thin white thread extend from my arm. Touching it, I feel no seam between the thread and my arm. It is as if it has molded itself into my skin. The threads disappear, and I can no longer feel them. I let a sigh of relief and turn around. And a squeak of terror escaped my lips. The wooden mannequin is standing an inch away from me, its painted smile a symmetry away from my face. I take a step backwards and my heart beats fast. This is no statue. This is no object. This is a living person. It has to be a costume. It has to be. My arm rises of its own accord, floating through the air. My legs begin to move, carrying me closer to this thing. I try to turn away, but I find I have no control. Turning back, I face it once again. Is it my imagination? Or has the smile on his face grown wider? I know now. It cannot be any person. By its own volition, my mouth opens. My tongue contorts, forming a sentence that I do not want to say. Forever, I will serve you. Have you ever woken up? only to find there was someone staring at you. It happens to people all the time on trains, buses, planes, and in public places. In fact, studies have shown that this instinctive response is a highly evolved defense mechanism of the subconscious mind, alerting your senses to the presence of a potential threat. Many other species in the animal kingdom possess similar traits which prove beneficial to survival. Given this, you might want to consider quickly pulling your curtains closed and shutting your door the next time you stick to the wake up at 3 a.m. That is, of course, if it's not already inside your room. All your life, you have heard people tell you that being afraid of the dark was childish, that it was a stupid and irrational fear. What those people don't know is that there is much more to be afraid of. My story goes back to my childhood and is based on events that actually happened when I was younger. As a young man of 17, I've been told by professionals that I suffer from acrophobia, or in other words, 
fear of the dark. Multiple times I've told family and these professionals that I was never afraid of the dark, but instead of some force that lie in wait beyond invisibility, I recall moments in my childhood when an overpowering dark figure would approach me in my room and I would black out. The next morning I would be covered in bruises with no memory of the night before except for the being. The figure was no bigger than any man I had at the time met, but he was far stronger. Every night I was visited by the figure and I would experience traumatic reoccurring dreams. The dreams usually consisted of me and my loved ones walking through an iron cage maze that was rigged with booby traps. Every so often my perspective, my perspective would shift from me in first and third person to a family member being morbidly executed. The one death that never changed was my mother's. She would take the first step into the maze and be immediately skewered by spikes, left to drown and choke on her own blood, and slowly bleed out. Every time I retold my stories, I ended up, I ended being left with no choice but to recant them and admit to them being dreams, but, but I knew that there was a presence lurking in the darkness. I watched me growing up, growing up into a tall, strong, and smart young man who has left me for who knows why for these last few years, but as I lay in my bed, I hear the low, struggled breathing just beneath me, the probing of unseen eyes penetrating me through the dense blackness of my room, the subtle creaking of the floorboards, and the tapping of hangers in my closet. There is another universe, a lot like ours. Interests to it are scattered throughout the world. In the places where most psychological energy gathers, schools, hospitals, that kind of place. During any leap year, on February 28th, this is the period of abnormal astral activity that opens the doors. At exactly midnight, the minute between the 28th and 29th, if you're lucky or unlucky enough to be in one of these doors, it will open and beckon you. In this other universe, things are mostly the same, except all love-hate relationships are reversed. Your worst enemy is your lover, your best friends have to kill you, and that sort of thing. It's a nice trip. A good escape from this reality, but have fun. But remember one thing. If you enter, you're stuck there until the next leap year.